Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about graphing absolute value equations and linear ones specifically. So the reality here is I'll need occasionally to do absolute value setups and I'm going to show you what the parent function looks like first. That would be the most generic form. Y equals the absolute value of X. I'm going to do it by looking at an XY table. So if I have 0 as my X value, the corresponding Y value would of course be 0. If I plug in 1, I end up with uh, the absolute value of 1 being 1. At negative 1, I end up with an absolute value of 1. At negative 2, it becomes 2. And at positive 2, it becomes 2. So the parent function, if I could ever make a line straight, that would be awesome, really is just starting at the vertex, and it's going up 1 over 1 both ways. So you get this sort of V look to it, going up 1 over 1 in both directions. So that's the parent function. It looks like a V that goes up 1 and over 1. From here, we need to look at some, uh, some of the possible transformations. One of the transfer transformations would be vertical and horizontal shifts or translations, whatever you want to call them. There's, these come in two uh, flavors visually. You have that type, and then I have this type. Now, in the first one, y equals the absolute value of x plus 2, the parent function is still there. See, it's got this whole thing. But what's left over is plus 2. And if I covered up the absolute value of x thing, it would say y is equal to 2. So really, this is just a vertical shift. So I just go to 2, and then I just make my parent function. That's what y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 2 looks like. On the other hand, I have this one, and it's a little bit more tricky. So let's do a table really quick, just to get a quick look. At 0 uh, here, I'd have 0 minus 3, which is, of course, the absolute value of that would be positive 3. As I go up, positive 1 gives me 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So I go into 2. If I go to positive 1, positive 2. If I go to positive 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so the absolute value is 1. And if I go to positive 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. If I go over it to 4, 4 is equal to an absolute value of 1. So that's where it starts to go back up and down. If I went down to negative 1, it would actually take me to 4. So the shift looks like this. Uh, at 0 on the y-axis, I'm actually up at 3 on the y. At uh, 1, I'm at 2, down, and down. So this should be like right at 3. And then I'm starting to go back up again. So I have that same v that I had before. It's the parent function. It doesn't look exactly like the other one because I made my uh, scale too small on the other one. But anyway, it looks exactly the same thing. The only difference is it shifted horizontally. The thing that's weird is that it actually shifts in the opposite direction to what you would think. You see x minus 3 and you think, oh, it's going to go to the left. But it doesn't. It actually shifts to the other side. And that's why I wanted to draw this one out as opposed to just telling you. That's why it works that way. Because if when you the absolute value is considered in, it actually shifts it the other direction. So if I had y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1, I would actually go on uh, the x val x axis to the left and then make the parent function. So if it's inside, shift it opposite. If it's outside, shift it as you would normally. For the next one, stretching and compression. Now, when I have the compression versus stretching, it speaks to uh, whatever the coefficient is in front of the absolute value. So I'm trying to find a half decent color to do this in, and I'm not going to find one, so I'm going to use gray. This is what I'm talking about. Now, if I have y is equal to 3x, if I was doing a little table here, 0 is still 0. But if I plug in x of 1, I get a y value of 3. And if I plug in negative 1, I get 3. So what this looks like is it's in the same basic spot as the parent function. It's just a lot steeper. We're stretching it up. On the other side, if I have 1 third x, the 0 and 0 work perfectly. I'm starting to get a little less steep. So I end up with something that looks a lot flatter, compressed down. 
that's the difference between stretching and compression in terms of the absolute value. Uh, from here, I'm going to look at reflection at the vertex. So this is really when I have a negative something or other in front of the absolute value. The only difference is I'm flipping it over. So when I plug in one or negative one and get an absolute value of one, I'm still multiplying it by negative one. So the change makes it look like this. It's still the parent function. It's just flipped over. There's a reflection about the x-axis or at the vertex here. Uh, on the other side, if I had y is equal to negative two, this is where I'm starting to mix them a little bit. It will be a little bit um, more, st it would be much steeper here, not much steeper, but some steeper, and it's actually going the opposite direction. So the parent function is not quite as wide, and it's also uh, going in the opposite direction. Where this goes is uh, combinations of things. So say we have y is equal to negative 3 times the absolute value of x plus 1 minus 2. There's a lot of stuff going on in this one. The first thing I need to do is figure out where the vertex is going to be. I'm going to use the cover up of all this to end up with this minus 2 here. So I know I'm going to go down 2 to start on that line to find my vertex. And the plus 1 tells me I need to go to the left, remember, because it's opposite. So here's where my vertex is. I also know that because it's times 3, I'm uh, stretching it out so it's going to be a lot steeper. And the negative tells me that I need to go upside down. So I end up with this. Now, the last thing, what does this look like in the calculator? Very similar to how it looks on paper, except they can draw straight lines and I can't. So I'm going to go to y equals, turn it on first, that would help. And then I'm going to type in negative 3. And for the absolute value, I'm actually going to go to the catalog. So hit second, catalog. And the one that says ABS means absolute value. Inside, I'm going to have x plus 1. Then I'm going to click out, type in minus 2. And I'm just going to graph it. And it should give me pretty much what I got, which it did. So there's absolute value equations. Um, there might be another one on inequalities. It's not much more complicated. And uh, that's all you need to know as far as graphing them goes. So good luck.